Hello, church family. How's everybody doing? Doing well. Doing, doing, doing great. well. Welcome doing back. Great. Welcome back. It's good to be back. All right. Better All to be strong. seen than viewed. It was great. We got a favorable verdict for our clients. Excellent. It was very good. Thank you All for right. asking. But you knew that already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> tell the people. You just tell wanted me people. to tell the people. All right. Well, for those of you who do not know, my name is Avery Armstead Jones. I'm joined here by my lovely husband, Cole Jones, and my mother in love, Mama Jones, <laughs> Sister Vanessa, and my father in love, Papa Jay, aka Deacon Brian. And we are here today for another installment of Living in the Word. We are so glad that you decided to tune in and join with us as we continue our study on Love 101. Yes. I know, like, we're newlyweds, and we're talking about love, so y'all y'all just get, get your pen and your paper, brace yourself, it's gonna, we're going we're gonna to make it together, all right? Yeah, all right. <laughs> but as we get started, we want to have a couple of announcements, as always, first things first, if this broadcast is a blessing to you, please like, share, subscribe, we would love to have your feedback, we would love to um, hear your comments, we always want to know how this message is helping to grow you and your faith as you continue your journey to actually live in the Word. Amen. If you are enjoying this and you would love to come and visit us we would love to absolutely have you Nineveh Missionary Baptist Church is located at 1067 Street North Birmingham Alabama 35206 we have church service on Sundays at 10 a.m. and on Wednesdays we have prayer at 530 that phone number you can call in is 351-999-3535 right after that comes back to that same address at 6 p.m. for Bible study or at 7 p.m. for our um, Bible book study with Minister Call. Uh, are we still in Exodus? We're out of Exodus. Exodus. Are, we, are, are we still in Exodus? We're in Exodus. We're going to be on chapter 12 this week. Chapter 12 of Exodus is going to be absolutely great. We would absolutely love to have you. Are those all of the announcements? I think so. We think so? Mm -hmm. Oh, and special shout out to the Elliots because they just celebrated their 60th anniversary. Uh -huh. If you see them in the church or if you just want to be in love, I think they are a great example as we transition to our topic oh, today. Oh, shout out to Pastor Will. Oh, who is hanging out with the grandkids today? Pastor, we miss you. Please come back. Um, I hope the grandkids don't wear you out too, too bad. There you go. I'm sure that I'm sure that they are <laughs> helping you practice love. Amen. 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 So what? Do I, let's do a quick recap. Like this is our third installment, Love 101. Where where are we? We are talking about what love looks like. Okay. What love looks like. I think last week we talked about. Our minister Cole gave us. Was it seven mm -hmm. different types of love? A list. You a had list. a list. <laughs> well, he had a list. list. I didn't make the list. He didn't make the list, but he had a list. Yeah. He had a and list. And we talked about the various types of love and what they look like. But uh, what we wanted to do this week was really get a more an in-depth look at what love looks like. And I know for me, um, as we talked about this and I studied about this, what I said was, what I wanted to do was I wanted to see love without the bright lights and the big sign that says love. Mm. Mm -hmm. Meaning, you know, we, we know that first, first Corinthians chapter 13 is our love chapter, right? Mm -hmm. And it tells us what love is and what it isn't and those different types of things to look for. But what I wanted to do was go through the scriptures and go through the books and, and look at characters or character traits. And when you, when you hear the message or you hear the story, that's what love looks like. Uh -huh. Now, we know that if we get into the, 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 the talk of Jesus, well, that's what love is because God is love. But there are so many scriptures in the Bible and so many characters in the Bible that have displayed what love looks like in those seven different types of love that Cole mentioned last week that I thought it would be good for us to kind of like highlight some of those so that, because I know this, people learn different ways. They do. You know, people learn different ways. And some people, you can, if you hear it, you, you've got it. Some people really have to touch it to know what, what it is and how it, how it works. And so different ways means different ways of you looking, seeing, hearing different things. One of the first things I want to do was I started looking into the scriptures. And one of the, um, I, guess, I guess, what you don't think, it, the message is not about love, but it talks about love. Mm -hmm. So I went to the Old Testament, and I looked at Ruth and Naomi. All right. And if you go to the Old Testament and you look at Ruth and Naomi, just briefly the story is that there was a man who uh, took his family to Moab because there was a famine in the land. He had a wife and two sons, and then once he got there, at some point he passed away. Now, we know that um, back in the day is not like today. 
So, like today, sisters are doing it for themselves. That's what they say, right? But back in the day, <laughs> back, back in the day, if the, if the man of the house passed away, then it was on the sons, right? And they had two sons. So these two sons were there with their mom. They married women of that culture, in the Moabite culture, which is totally different from where they were. And then the sons passed away. Now, because the men of the household have now died, that the, she is now a widow with these two daughter-in-laws, and she, she's not making any money. They're not bringing any, any, anything in. No food stamps? There's no, no, no. there's none there's of nothing. that. There's nothing. There's, there are no programs set up mm -hmm. for the widow woman or any of these no different programs. types. <laughs> no. no programs set up. People have stopped bringing casseroles. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so she's headed back to her land, mm -hmm. and she has these two Moabite women who were married to her sons, and the sons have passed away, and they're going with her. And she stops, and she says to them, look, uh, you can go home to your families. You're still young enough. You can probably remarry, and and have a family or whatever. But you know, this is not this is not going to work. Mm -hmm. And they clung to her. They clung to her. They wept with her, and they wanted to continue. And she can, she was kind of stirred about them being able because what she's looking at is for their benefit. Mm -hmm. One of them decided to go on home to the, her family. The other one wanted to stay with her and, and goes on to do like this whole saying, you know, wherever you go, I'll go, mm -hmm. to the point where she stuck with her. Now, what I saw in that, that the message in that was not about love, but that's what love looks like. Mm -hmm. When you see that, okay, you know, things are not working out for me and that I'll be alone, mm -hmm. but I got to think about your well-being. Mm -hmm. I got to think about your future. And you still have a chance to make it. Mm -hmm. So I want you to go on back mm -hmm. and maybe remarry somebody else mm -hmm. and things will look up for you. They may not look up for me, but they'll look up for you. Mm -hmm. And what I saw in that story was love, it, that's what love looks like. When you're not thinking about you, you're thinking about someone else. And that's what, that's what Naomi did for Ruth. Mm -hmm. Turn it around, Ruth was thinking in terms of, uh-uh. This part, she's been too good mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. She's been too good to me. And I'm not going to let her go off by herself. Yeah, for her to die. For her to die, to her to be alone, for her not to have. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be in this together. Mm -hmm. And so what she saw was, hey, what I saw was, that's what love looks like. I love this because so many times, at least in my Christian walk, we always looked at the story of Ruth for love in this context of Boaz, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I'm waiting on my Boaz. Exactly. <laughs> you exactly. know, oh, we always glorified and glamorized, and Boaz is a good man. Don't get me wrong. And mm -hmm. we appreciate Boaz because Boaz and Ruth are in the lineage of Jesus. You know, mm -hmm. they end up, Boaz has Obey, and then Obey has Jesse, and Jesse has David, and then David has Solomon, and you keep reading it's in there. <laughs> Huh? Know your lineage. Know your lineage. Know your <laughs> you know, keep reading. But I think that's so beautiful because so many times, I'm going to talk to my single girls for a little bit, so many times we are so focused on the romantic type of love mm -hmm. that we don't take time to cultivate and, stru and structure just love in general mm -hmm. and the familial type of love that we have to have. Like we can be so selfish and focused on, oh, I want my Boaz, but are you a Ruth? Yes. Are you the one? Are you the type of woman who would stay with your ex-husband's mama, mm -hmm. your 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 mother, your mother-in-law, in law, your mm -hmm. deceased? I, I love you, Mama Jay, but I think you would send me away too. I would. I would. And I would stay with you. And you know, we would just mm -hmm. be have to be in this We'd together. Just have to <laughs> we just have to work it out. But I think that is so powerful of, you know, I think one of the reasons why Ruth was able to be such a good wife, while we saw, but before she became a wife, while she was such a good worker mm -hmm. in um, Boaz's fields, why she was so obedient to Naomi's instruction and in order to listen to her and figure out what all she needed to do was because she honored her and she loved her first. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I was thinking about um, Naomi, how she had to have been a good lover of people. Mm -hmm. You know, she she didn't, in order for them to cling to her, mm -hmm. she had to be something worth clinging to. Yeah. Right. You know, because there's so many people that are so selfish mm -hmm. that, that, that don't think about, that only think about themselves that people don't want to be around. Right. Or even not, you know, I always would also think that, let's say, Let's say she wasn't, right? Because there's there's passage in here when she's like, you know, just call me Myra, and she is like going off, and she is angry. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we, um, 
we can bond in our grief, mm -hmm. right? So for her, for Ruth, and for the other sister-in-law, um, uh, um, Orpa. Or Orpa, excuse me, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, they, they're, they're grieving a husband, mm -hmm. right? They're grieving a husband. This is a sad time. All three of them are grieving a husband. All three of them are technically grieving. You're right. All three of them are grieving a husband. You got something on My husband got something on him. I'm trying to get it out of his eye. I'm trying to love you. It's still there. <laughs> um, but she is, all three of them are grieving a husband. But for these young women in particular, they're grieving a husband alone, mm -hmm. right? Like, that's it. For Naomi, however, she is grieving her husband and her two children. Her entire family unit is gone. It is just her, right? And so I think that there is something to be said, even if she wasn't the best mother-in-law. Maybe you don't have a good relationship with, with that person. But I think anybody would agree that sometimes when grief or any type of tragedy happens, mm -hmm. you know, you band together. You know, right now we're praying for those who've been impacted by Hurricane Ivan. Yes. Um, is it Ian, excuse Ian. me. I said Ivan. That was my back when was I was young. That was back mm -hmm. in the day. With Hurricane Ian. And, you know, I don't think right now that they care about who's voting for who in the primaries. Mm -hmm. I don't think they care. Like, the bridge has collapsed. Like, I don't think they really care, you know, what's going on with what person. But you can bind together in love. And so many times I see people when they go through tragedy, you know, find themselves in bitterness mm -hmm. and in isolation and in unforgiveness. But you can actually use that as fertile ground to, to grow some love. Yes. Mm -hmm. To grow some love. Absolutely. And so, uh, so but the other thing that is that Ruth did not think of herself. No. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's what it says. It says that love does not think, does not, um, think of its own. Or seek his own. Mm -hmm. He says it's not easy to provoke and thinks no evil. And so that's how love looks like, what, what love looks like. And so we really have to, um, you know, to, to, to be that person, mm -hmm. you know, that we, we're loving without dissemination. Right. Okay. Well, I was just going to, I was okay. going to say this about Ruth and Naomi. Um, you were you made the comment about growing in grief. Um, I when I look at Ruth and Naomi, you got to think about Naomi's mothering instinct. Mm -hmm. Like okay. she, what she says is she realizes she's going to be alone. Right. Like she sends these girls alone. Her her husband is dead. Her 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 sons are dead. Mm -hmm. And she's and she could hop, like you think about the movies. Like this would be perfect script because in the movies. She would like hoard them. She would be like a Cinderella mm -hmm. stepmother kind. Like, no, you got to stay with me. You can't leave You're me. You're never going to leave me. But she says, she looks at them and she says, no, you're young enough. Mm -hmm. I'll figure it out by myself. I'm going home. You stay home. Y'all stay here and be a girl, be a woman and find a new husband. Mm -hmm. And so she's willing to sacrifice herself. In the, I, you know, I'm a widow. I'm a widow indeed. And this may not work out for me. Mm -hmm. But y'all stay. And I love that Ruth reciprocates that, mm -hmm. but I but I don't think we give enough credit to Naomi in the fact that Naomi's love for them was so selfless, and sacrificial. Mm -hmm. Because a widow indeed really like had the right to be like, mm, no, y'all stay, mm -hmm. come take care of me, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. be my people. Mm -hmm. And instead, she's like, no, y'all have a future. Oh, absolutely. I don't have one. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And I don't want to get in the way of that. Okay? Exactly. Exactly. That is what love looks like in the scriptures. I looked at uh, another passage that you and I were talking about the other night that uh, the gentleman doesn't have a name. But the, Jesus was, he was preaching, he was teaching, and people were coming from all over, and they were in the house to the point where you couldn't get in the door. That, uh, that everybody was, was trying to, to get to Jesus and to hear from Jesus. And there was a gentleman who was paralyzed. Mm -hmm. And four men who carried their friend it's to funny. see Jesus. Mm -hmm. But they couldn't get to the door. Yeah. So they went to the roof mm -hmm. and they lowered him down. Now, I thought about that because these four gentlemen, if they are carrying this individual, mm -hmm. they have the activity of their limbs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't really need Jesus to touch them. Mm -hmm. But what a friend we have that would carry me. What is that old saying uh -huh. you said? It's he, about your brother? Is he heavy? Is it heavy? No, no, no he's, he's my, my brother. brother. <laughs> and, and that's what they, they did. They carried them 
to this man who could heal him. So what I saw in that passage was there was great faith. That's what Jesus acknowledged for them. But I saw love. Mm -hmm. I saw love for my fellow man. I saw love for my neighbor. I saw love for my friend mm -hmm. that I'm going to go. And I'm going to tell you, I want to put people. I don't really like big crowds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> But what I'm reading here is there was crowds and crowds and throngs of people, but they were willing to go through that, climb up on the roof, and get their friend down to Jesus who could help them. I, what I love about that, too, is, you know, there's an opportunity of maybe you aren't the person that's carrying somebody that's lame because maybe you don't know anybody that needs to be carried. Mm -hmm. But maybe you are the homeowner who has opened their home up for Jesus. Okay. Okay. Like, let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. You know, you thought Jesus was going to come by for dinner and all of a sudden your house and got turned out to Magic City Classic. Okay. <laughs> wow. And now I need a new roof. And now I need a new roof. Mm -hmm. Like not only have, has everybody shown up, but Im imagine, imagine Cole, picture it, picture it. We are at our home mm -hmm. and um, we're just going to have a couple of people over for small group. Mm -hmm. You know, our parents, um, your parents, my parents, you know, the siblings, immediate nuclear family. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, our entire wedding list, mm -hmm. the, all the guests from our wedding show up at our three-bedroom, two-bathroom, mm -hmm. less than 2,000 square feet, you know, humble abode. Mm -hmm. And as you are, you know, fl fl flipping burgers and telling the dog to get down and, you know, trying to keep everybody sane, all of a sudden you start hearing these chips. Oh, on the top of the in the kitchen. Can you picture it? I don't think I'm as gracious. <laughs> <laughs> I what know. Is what is that? <laughs> like you know, the little white pebbles hey, are coming down. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, no, you hear a, a chainsaw <laughs> coming in, coming in, and and and, and the the honored guest, the honored guest, Mama Jones. That's it. Oh, let, let them come. It's fine, mm. baby. It's gonna be all. Right. It's gonna be all right. Are you paying for it? It's gonna, gonna pay for the fit my little room. Which is where? Right. Okay, okay. So this is where I was trying to get to my example of mm -hmm. is, I love when the Bible shows us a story that we can get from multiple perspectives, mm -hmm. right? Like you have, like for the prodigal son, for example. You have the ex example, you have the character of the son, you have the character of the father, but then you also have the character of the brother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's so many different perspectives there. And so in this one, I just wanted to highlight, because I've never heard anybody really talk about, if you were the homeowner in that situation, <laughs> and now your roof has a hole in it. Mm -hmm. You know, it, I would, I'd be sitting there asking Jesus, now Now you're going to pray that Elijah prayer to stop the rain from <laughs> showing up until we can get this fixed. Like, what are we, we going to do? But, you know, you think about verse 7 in, in chapter 13, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. That's what those friends did. Yeah. That's what they did. They were bearing him. They were they they were believing that he was gonna get healed. They they had hope mm -hmm. that he would get healed yep. and they endured the hardship. Uh -huh. And so did yes. the homeowner. Exactly. And you know, I was just thinking about that. I, I'm looking at the, my version of it. It's from the NLT. Mm -hmm. And it says, you know, um, love is patient and kind. It is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. And it keeps no record of being wronged. Mm -hmm. It does not rejoice in injustice, but rejoices whenever truth wins out. It never gives up. It loves. It, loses, it never loses faith. It's always hopeful. Endures through every circumstance. Mm. That every circumstance, that that's not getting lesson. irritable, that's a that's a lesson. That's just that's it. That's, that's it. That's a lot. <laughs> that's, a lot. That's, a lot. that's a lot. But you know, you go throughout the Bible and you see all these different things where he tells us what to do and how to behave. And I want you to uh, if you if you recognize that there is one ingredient in all of them, and that's love. It is. Mm -hmm. You know, that's love. You know, he talks about love, joy, peace. You know, he mm -hmm. talks about the fruit of the spirit, you know, and, and, but love is the ingredient that's in everything. And we look at first Corinthians 13 and we look at it as the love chapter. But, mm -hmm. but if you, if you look at it in its entirety and its totality, it's really what, what, what this scripture is talking about is worship. Well, yeah, this, this yeah, entire yeah. chapter is, you know, love is the greatest of all because God is love. Mm -hmm. Right. But it's talking about worship and people that were using all these gifts and all these other things mm -hmm. and they were puffing that gift mm -hmm. up and he was like you know what 
the one thing that I see that's missing is love. You can prophesy. Yeah. You can speak in all kind of tongues. Mm -hmm. You can um, lay hands yeah. and, and, and you know have faith that can you move can, mountains. You can speak mm -hmm. with yeah with with all these different um, intellects. You know you you can people listen to you when mm -hmm. you talk, Avery. Mm -hmm. You know me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because you know you you're so intelligent and and, and, and all that good stuff. I love but my were you about to say something? Yeah, I was just gonna say um, that we, you can pay attention to uh, in a, in social media, of course, mm -hmm. where you got a whole bunch of preachers and people talk about their experiences with these preachers behind closed doors, mm -hmm. and they'll be like, "Well, they were just so rude, or mm -hmm. they didn't have time of day for me." Mm -hmm. And then you'll read the story about he was just so gracious and just so down to earth, and he took he was very patient with me. And I think we sometimes see these big gifts. Mm -hmm. You know, this person who has 30 million followers on Instagram, this person who is packing out arenas and football stadiums uh, for their preaching gift, mm -hmm. but they don't have common courtesy at the drag mm -mm. You know, you and know? I, I think about it, and this, this is not a shameless plug, but I think about my pastor. Come on, real, can we talk who, about who is yeah. the most humble man you ever want to meet? Mm -hmm. Who is picking up picking trash, up trash at, at his church? church mm -hmm. Who will literally take his shirt off and give mm -hmm. it to you? With dry people to come, y'all need to find dry that people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all just to get them to know the Lord. Yeah, you know, and 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 I, that that's that's the one thing that I've noticed over the years is that. Everything that he does is because he has so much respect for the Lord. Yeah, yeah. He really does. He has so much respect for the Lord. And I think we kind of talked about that. Right. Is because the Bible says, love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and all your might. Mm -hmm. That's the first commandment. Mm -hmm. But what was the second one? Love the Lord your God. I mean, love, love your neighbor as yourself. As yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, if you hadn't developed a healthy respect for the for loving God, mm -hmm. you can't love your neighbor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I I look at this man. You know, we 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 look at him and everything else, and he's not perfect. I know I've been knowing him long enough to know that he's not perfect, but I do see the perfection in his love. Yeah, absolutely. I'm talking. This dude has a love walk, and so um, we always talk about examples mm -hmm. throughout the Bible. But we got an example that's walking amongst us. Mm -hmm. We do. You know, I'm talking about. Sometimes I'm like, dude, they are walking over you. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know? We're a little defensive about our past. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. We got to protect them yeah. at all costs. <laughs> But, you know, but meek, we talk about meekness. Yeah, strength under control. Yeah, how it's really strength under control because he knows that the big picture mm -hmm. is we got to win souls. Yeah. yeah. The big picture is that um, woe to the man who splits the flock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the big picture is that if I behave unseemly, mm -hmm. everybody going to be watching yeah, that is true. And so if I'm doing, if I'm the one that's doing wrong or whatever else, people are watching us. Mm -hmm. And people really, you know, they, they'll they point out that, oh, she's supposed to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. but but they will they won't point out this man that's that's given of himself 24 mm -hmm. seven doing things, giving all his money away. <laughs> and, uh, but but doing everything possible just to draw people unto heaven, mm -hmm. right. draw, draw people unto God. They don't see those things, mm -hmm. but you you do stuff. You push people and push people and push people to get them to 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 act out. Yeah. And God forbid somebody falls off the wagon or acts out, mm -hmm. then that's all people talk about twenty four seven. Yeah. But nobody talks about all of the good things that they did and all of the things that they reached out to do. To, yeah. to draw people to Christ. But to that point, right, mm -hmm. if we're going to talk about love the Lord our God with all of our soul, might, and strength. Mm -hmm. And I, mind. That's, your soul is your mind. It just depends on the version you read. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine um, what we do at home. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you're going to love the Lord your God with all your soul, might, and your strength, I have a theory. And my theory that is if you learn to love your, the, the Lord your God with your soul, might, and strength, it gives you an ethic for how to love other people. Mm -hmm. All right. And so I think we kind of need to talk about what does it look like to love the Lord with your soul, might, and strength. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the first things that I just 
thought about as you were breaking that down is your soul. Like, you know, we're a triune being, right? So we have a soul, we have a body, and we have a spirit. Mm -hmm. So if my, with all my soul is my soul, with all of my might is my spirit, and with all of my strength is my body, mm -hmm. how am I loving the Lord in those three different silos, so mm -hmm. to speak? I mean, and collectively. I think, I think, and you're spot on, spot on. But then can we go a little more down to the, the, the kindergarten level? <coughs> yes. Okay. So if, if I'm looking at the kindergarten level, um, if I'm looking at my soul, my mind, so how am I thinking like God? Well, how do I learn to think like God? I can't think like God unless I know what God said, right? Mm -hmm. You're talking about the kindergarten level. That is kindergarten. No, no, no. I, I, what you talking about? But you were like, let's take it down to the kindergarten level. I was like, come on, you better break it down. Well, no, but, but you're breaking it down. Yeah, we got to go. We got to go down. So if, if that's my soul. So my soul, my thought life, my being transformed by the renewing of my mind, right? Mm -hmm. My might. So if my might is my, um, is my spirit, but my, my might is also my resources. Because I'm, I'm only mighty in what I have access to, mm -hmm. right? So whether I have access in the spirit realm or I got access in the financial realm or I got access in property or I got access, I become mighty in whatever I have access to. So my might looks like my resources. So if I love the Lord with all of my resources, that looks like going beyond my tithes and saying I've done enough. Mm -hmm. That looks like I've given God my time. Mm -hmm. I have given God if, my, yeah, treasure. my treasure, mm -hmm. my talent. And I, I gave my dad the illustration this morning. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm an author. But if I say, okay, I got 10 good books in me, and I say I'm going to give the Lord three, and then I'm going to go write these novels so I can make bank, that's not giving God worse than loving the Lord with all my might. No. Mm -hmm. No. If, and, and this, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to make anybody uncomfortable, if I'm a musician or I'm an artist um, and I say, I'm going to make my first couple of albums gospel and give the Lord that, mm -hmm. and now I'm going to go make bank mm -hmm. <laughs> over here in the in second the world, world. Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm, I'm going to go over here and sing what I want to sing. You see that a lot. You, you, you do. You know, and I'm not trying to put nobody on blast, but I'm just trying to give us an, 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 an example. That's not loving the Lord with all of my might because all of my might says that all that I do, all that I own, all that I have, all that I am, all that I am. And that's not always church. Mm -hmm. I was just about to say that. Yeah. So sometimes God will send you into those mm -hmm. situations. But some would argue, well, if you're a lawyer, use all of your might to help the needy people. I was like, but God sent me to my law firm. Yeah. And, and, and loving the God with all of my loving God with all of my might looks like being obedient. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I, but I think I think you being in where you're supposed to be being obedient. That's all your might. That's all my might. I think you being down in family court for 30 years. Um, and serving people and being a light in the spot, even when it was hard, mm -hmm. even when you were alone in leadership, or even when, when things were difficult, I think that's all your might. Mm -hmm. I think you being at the fire station, even when folks are cussing like sailors, and you being the guy who didn't, mm -hmm. that's all my might. Mm -hmm. <laughs> even when it could have been popular, sitting on the, on the, um, on the thing while everybody's smoking cigars, you're not smoking a cigar, but you, you, you being, mm -hmm. being friendly mm -hmm. and being loving and being kind, that's all my might. And all my strength, I think that is enduring. I think all of my strength, I think that is, that is. We ain't got to talk about that word, that enduring, enduring word. <laughs> you know, because love endures all, that yes. enduring thing. Yeah. <laughs> but I think all of my strength says, okay, I could, oh Lord, I'm going to write all the books. Lord, I'm going I'm to I'm serve for the 30 years. Lord, I'm going to go and practice the law with the rich white people. I'm going to do all the things. I'm, and I don't, I don't mean that, you know, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to get uncomfortable. Yeah. All of my strength says when it gets hard, mm -hmm. I'm going to keep pushing. Mm -hmm. I love that because right now, um, so a little tidbit, mm -hmm. side story. At work, um, we y'all probably have experienced this too, but at work, I have to reset my password like every, mm. I don't know how many days, mm -hmm. 90, 120. It seems like every day. It <laughs> seems like all the time I get the notification that it is time for me to update my password. And at our job, like, it's not like on my iPhone where I can like kind of like swipe over and be like, nah, I ain't doing it today. Like, I actually have to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, um, in this season, the password that I have right now, I'm not going to tell them my password. I'm telling them the motivation of where it came from. The motivation of where my password came from came out of Hebrews chapter 10, verses 30, verse 36, mm -hmm. which is what, Cole, you're talking about right now. And it's, it's, so, it's so spot on because it's, it's hard. And a lot of people don't see this as a love thing. 
But I'll start at verse 35. Do not throw away your confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he has promised. Patient endurance is what you need right now so that way you will continue to do God's will. Like, how can I say that I love God with all of my heart, all of my soul, all of my might, all of my strength, all of all that I am, mm-hmm. if one, I don't have patience, which is a fruit of the spirit. Mm-hmm. If two, I don't endure to actually see to the end. Mm-hmm. And that three, I'm not actually doing what God wills for me to do. And can I park there real quick? And I know this is not on love, but I, I feel like you just walked us into where we need to be, where God wills me to be. Mm-hmm. And I even think that might be that might be a, a form of loving God, mm-hmm. because sometimes I think in loving ourselves, we want what we will to mm-hmm. be, and we are impatient for God to perform. And so we step out and we say, well, I believe that the Lord is just going to have to bless me if I go out and I start this business. Mm-hmm. And God said, mm-mm. Mm-hmm. You don't, see, y'all can't see this, but in my Bible, I have like sticky notes all throughout my Bible or whatever. And, and on it, it says Future Jones is Hebrews 11, um, 2021. That's when Cole and I got engaged. We got engaged in 2021. And Hebrews 11 was our scripture. Like we were like studying it and we were um, reading it every night and we were trying to memorize it. And we like had all these things around Hebrews 11. And particularly what you just talked about that kind of triggered me a little bit was, um, and this will be our last story because before we wrap up, we can talk more next time. Um, was we had our hearts set on a certain house. It still hurt. It still hurts <laughs> to talk about. <laughs> Not, I, don't, I don't think you understand. We didn't have ourselves set on it. We had purchased it. We had bought the house. We had the keys. Yeah. We had the deed. I, I literally threw away the garage door opener today. We don't have to talk about that. But what yeah. we do have to talk about is, is that we had prayed about it. We had circled it in faith. We literally were writing on the walls with Sharpies. It didn't have walls, so don't think I was every, writing on paint. Every stud. <laughs> it was on yeah. studs. <laughs> yeah. um, the house was a, a project house. It was down to the studs, and it was going to have to be rebuilt. But we just had the faith to believe that we were going to build it together, and we were going to do all this stuff or whatever. And it, it took a major blow when we ended up losing that house Mm -hmm. um, for situations that we can't necessarily get into right now. But what I can legally. Mm -hmm. But what we can get into is the fact that God's will for us in this season of our life and in our marriage is for us to be in our house. And we I was just talking about our our nice three two house that sits on a really busy road that has a lot of stuff going on that we feel like we are always on top of each other in. And it's you know us but that's where we are right now and i wonder if god's will for us in being there one looks like contentment in where we are Mm -hmm. right and the lesson that we've had to learn maybe somebody out there is in a job and they're like i'm trying to love god but i want to leave this job i love you lord but it's these people i can't stand (laughs) like like help me oh i feel like we're all on top of each other we're crowded like i want to be out of here and you want to you are tempted to move outside of the will of God. But what you don't realize is something that I've been humming all night as we've been doing this broadcast was, you know, God is preparing me. Mm -hmm. That maybe we would not have had the love to sustain and build that big old house if we did not have the trenches of where we are right now in this season of our marriage, right? But like it's in God's will for us because, I mean, we we keep it honest here, right? We're gonna be transparent. I'm not going to be too transparent, but just transparent enough. <laughs> 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 um, y'all, that's too transparent. It's transparent enough. But in my transparency, uh, in our newlywed days, it hadn't always been, you know, rose petals and sunshine, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And if we didn't have the confines of our current house. Go live in a whole different you can go live in a whole different part of the house and I would never see you. I would never know you were there. You, you, you yeah. know what I mean? Like there's something to be said about God cultivating something in this little incubator right now. And so I don't know why I went on that tangent. Maybe somebody is in a marriage and they're thinking about leaving. Maybe somebody is in a job and they're ready to call it quits. Trust me, I am too. That's why the scripture was what got me through this season. <laughs> I have moved on. The Lord has helped me endure. But there's something to be said about love 101 to say that, you know, part of loving God, part of loving your neighbor as unto yourself and part of doing the things that the Lord commands us to do is also understanding that 
our life is not ours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, very important. Like it's not, it's not your life. It's not mm -hmm. your life. It's not your life. You don't get to, you know, decide if you will or won't pick up trash if the Holy Spirit is functioning you to do it because mm -hmm. it's not yours, right? right? Yeah. You don't get to decide whether or not you will or won't give to people or pay your tithes or do whatever because if you really love the Lord, then you understand it's not yours, right? Mm -hmm. Like like you get to steward that well Which in we got to talk about on the next episode because I got a whole lot to say about that. We, about, we are out of time. Mm -hmm. I know we out of time. <laughs> so I'm trying to close. Oh, you get to, like, as we are talking about Love 101, as we are back into the basics, so to speak, of this series and this topic, we have to remember the main thing, which is our life is not ours. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. It's, the Lord. it's the Lord. It is the Lord. So y'all go live in the word, and um, we are so happy that y'all joined us. And please tune in next time as we continue this discussion. We love you, and we hope to see you soon. See you next time. See you.